Hi, everyone. Welcome to Chair Yoga. Believe it or not, we are on our final uh, day of the Eight Limbs of Yoga, that series that we've been doing, believe it or not. Ten weeks ago, we started, and here is our last chance to uh, visit that topic. So today, we're on samadhi. Samadhi is like um, the the top of the line, you know, it is the enlightenment state. It is that you have come into a state, again, we're on these last three limbs of yoga. It's all about meditation. It's not about the physicality of the practice of yoga, but it's about your meditative state. And samadhi is considered the, the uh, ultimate experience of meditation. So it is often, in, you know, referred to as, enlightenment or pure awareness or even pure love and I like to share this story forgive me if you've heard it before but um, I had a dear friend I have a dear friend who lived in the community of uh, Iowa where I had lived most of my life uh, who started this meditation process much sooner than I did um, and he was quite taken by it and quite changed by it and I remember I'll never forget his words were that well, once he began that daily practice of meditation, how he saw his, um, I'm going to say character defects because he, like me, was very involved in 12-step process of AA. And so that's kind of a, a term that's used, uh, character defects, not a good one, but it's what it is what's used. But anyway, he saw that as you know, that through his uh, meditation spirit um, experience, that those kind of those kind of behaviors were inconceivable, because he found himself in such a state of pure love, that, you know, behaving badly or judging or just, you know, name something was inconceivable. So I've always that that word floats up for me all the time about that. Talk about the ultimate state uh, of being is when those kind of responses, reactions in life are absolutely inconceivable. So samadhi, that's where we are today. I'm gonna to suggest um, that we use uh, one of our words for a focal point. So again, finding a single word mantra, that's just a word you can keep bringing up for yourself. I'm gonna remind you of those four primary intentions of yoga by Deepak Chopra that I'm now calling and referring to the promises of yoga. So maybe a word will float up from, those, from that when I give you that information again, or something else for yourself um, that's kind of not applicable to those intentions. Um, so whatever your word may be, I'm going to ask that you take a moment now, maybe close your eyes and see if that doesn't you know, show up for you. Those Four primary intentions, again, are a vibrant and healthy body, alert and focused mind, loving and compassionate heart, and lightness of being. Okay, so... I am going to move myself into our practice mode and I'll invite you to do the same. Let's take the block and place it between our ankles and sit forward on the chair so you're not relying on the back on the chair rest, backrest. Sit up tall, pull the belly in, turn palms up on your lap and just feel the alignment uh, that the chair provides, that they're just the very framework of the chair kind of creates this uh, you know, defined space, a three-dimensional defined space that you're just entering into um, with awareness. So you're concentrating on you know, that you're lining up your knees straight out from the hip points and that you're feeling the block between your ankles as a way of properly aligning your body, pull the belly in again, I say, just to be aware of core strength to keep you in an upright and, and strong position. Let's turn palms up and close the eyes. And we open into this transition into the breath. So it's deeply into this experience of breathing. 
So it's not just something you're observing from, you know, the sideline. It's something you're experiencing and noticing right from the very depth of it, the inside out. And your choice, whether you want to begin sort of a controlled breath practice where you're, you know, choosing a particular way to start your awareness of breath, deepening the breath, opening the belly, letting that breath rise up into the chest, that kind of thing, or, or that you simply notice how you're breathing in its own natural rhythm. And the difference being that you're fully attuned to that and that you feel like you are participating in it. Eyes are closed if you haven't already done that. Palms are open. I want you to feel your elbows squeeze in towards your body. Hands are open in the mudra of receptivity. Relax the tongue, all the muscles of your face. And connect now as we transition into yoga. Connect with the awareness of breath all the way through the cycle of breath. Knowing that our awareness alone will deepen that breath. This is the first of many asana, you know, that one of the eight limbs of yoga is the asana, which is the physical posture. And one of the definitions I think I mentioned to you when we were talking about that particular limb was that it is called the ease and steadiness of the body. The steadiness of the body. And what occurred to me today was that I listened to a guided meditation very frequently of a woman who uses the term steadiness like it is a capital S that we find ourselves supported by the steadiness. I'm not gonna try to draw any conclusions or connect any dots for you, but I just, it came to me today the, of use of that word and it seemed kind of profound and wanted to mention it. That we, know of and understand asana as the ease and steadiness of the body. And that that may be a place of refuge. Let's use this time to set our particular intention for this class, what it is you need and want from yoga. As we enter this practice, our final awareness of these eight limbs of yoga and today being samadhi, pure love, pure awareness. Let's finish the breath cycle we're on and flutter the eyes back open. And then let's lift up those arms and bring palms together up and overhead for an inhale that we sink up to. Exhale as we bring our palms into the heart space. Inhale up and exhale, go wide. We're going to begin with just a movement of the spine by drawing those arms back along the chair's frame. And we've got a real arched back body rounding through and drop the chin to the chest. So moving through your cow, this is the cow, that's the extension of the spine and the cat as we flex the spine and feel just the opposite movement. So find that steadiness of breath. You can feel the rhythm of it connecting to this movement. That's the vinyasa of yoga. Try to exaggerate it where you feel the change of tone of your belly. You certainly feel the movement through the vertebrae and feel the breath connecting to all of that. Next time you're in the rounded back, chin is tucking in towards your throat, take a pause there, feel the roundness of your back, 
that you're trying to pull the midsection of your back toward the backrest a little bit more. On your next inhale, start reaching forward, forward, and then folding all the way down. See if you can slip your armpits over your kneecaps, or you get as close to that as you're able. Let your head hang low, and you've got your eyes wide open, more or less looking down and under the chair. Palms to the floor or fingertips or as much of your hands as you can manage. Let's just surrender to the fold, feeling now our breath as it interacts with our body quite differently. Full breath in and out, aware of this fold. And how that feels in the body. See if you can come up the way you came in. So begin to lift slowly and let your arms start to carry you up. So they extend out in front of you and lifting you up halfway is where we're gonna stop and squeeze that block and feel the strength of our thighs now. I want you to imagine that you're about ready to lift your bottom right up off that chair. So your legs feel very engaged, press your feet to the ground. And then all the way up, arms can come up and we'll hold that. Arms extended alongside the ears if you can. Connect now to the full rhythm of your breath and let your shoulder blades drop down. You know, with arms lifted like this, there's a tendency to kind of let the shoulder blades ride on up, but we want those shoulder blades down and let those arms extend just through the shoulder socket but doesn't, doesn't move the shoulder blades out of alignment. Steady that breath in and out. And now our cat-cow movement or the movement through the spine is gonna look a little bit differently as we exhale, excuse me, as we take our next inhale here and exhale forward. To be honest with you, I'm not sure where the, where the best place for our inhale is. I think perhaps I misled. I'm going to say maybe lifting up. Inhale here and exhale down. So not as much movement of the spine, but certainly movement through the shoulder joints. See what you can do to enhance this movement so you're getting as much you know, bang for the buck. So your body is really finding some cooperation here throughout the whole back body, as well as those shoulders. Let's try that forward fold again, reaching, reaching, reaching. So your armpits lay down on your kneecaps, if possible, palms to the floor and you're letting, surrendering the weight of your head, looking down and under the chair. Stay with it until you really let go. You have, you notice that there's just this layer of resistance. You're not quite willing, didn't even realize it, but then you keep breathing your way through layer after layer of release or surrender to this fold. This time let's jump our hands to our thighs and squeeze the elbows in. We'll find that halfway lift but we've got our elbows squeezed in. Pull your chin in towards your throat. So the back of your head, neck and spine feel in alignment in this diagonal line of alignment in your back body. Let's deepen the breath. Find the full cycle of breathing. As we come up, palms are gonna come together. Inhale, look up and hold, breathing in and breathing out. By looking up, just gonna say it, so in case you're trying to fit your head in there, your arms aren't really alongside your ears when you're trying to look up, are they? So just bringing your palms together, lifting up, and then looking up towards your hands, that of course, that'll just naturally bring your head back. So you've lost that connection to the ears, but that's by design, that's the way we've chosen here. So don't be trying to struggle with what about that part. When we come out of that, let's neutralize the head and open up the arms into the cactus position. So our elbows are held 
at the height of our armpits. Spread your hands wide and then close them up. So you're just feeling movement through your fingers, the hands, maybe a little bit of the wrists. You're just opening up all those joints, just awareness in the hands, fingers, wrists. Relax the shoulder blades down the back. We're gonna close it up and open it back. Let's inhale here, exhale on the close, always keeping our elbows held at the height of the armpits. See if you can breathe in and out through your nose here. The challenge is to stick with the breath until it's completed. So especially now notice that you're letting your exhale really come all the way through. So if my pace is not according to your breath, then by all means, you just ignore what you're seeing on the screen and follow the rhythm of your breathing. We're gonna meet in the closed position and hold that, and then just lift up as much as we are able and back down. So come up and down with those arms pressing together from elbow through the palms of the hand, and just move through that midline. Let your head tilt back or however you just naturally feel your body sort of adjusting to that. Follow that with your awareness as you breathe in and breathe out. It's an interesting, isn't it, of what muscles are involved to lift your arms up like that, where you feel it. It's not limited to your shoulders, at least certainly isn't it for me. I can feel it through my back and feel it into the core uh, abdominal wall up front. Let's lift and hold. Find your full breath, see what you can relax into. And we'll open back into that cactus position. And this time those hands are gonna drop down and back up. It's awkward. You're trying to keep those upper arms kind of in their light, nice long line from elbow to elbow as you drop those hands forward and back. So you kind of accept the awkwardness of it. No, that's what we're gonna be in for. But utilizing you know, different muscles toning and utilizing different muscles of the arms. Let's hold that, elbows up and just see if you can broaden. And what, what about those shoulder blades? Can we manipulate them down through the back body a little bit? One more full breath cycle all the way through and release your arms all the way down and then just reset the body. Do your shoulder rolls, do your shrugging, whatever it is your body seems to be needing to reset after all of that. I'm gonna move that block out of the way here. So I'd like you to do the same, just maybe push it under your chair or move it away. And let's try some movement where we're gonna sync up arms and legs together. Let's start by just lifting the feet up. I'm gonna just adjust so I can feel my, uh, the chair is sort of freeing up the movement of the legs. So just lifting up one at a time, trying to keep my, the rest of my body in a somewhat stationary position. So I'll feel that rhythm of movement. And then the next time your right leg is up, let's lift the opposite arm. So now we're gonna just see about doing that. So the rhythm of movement is just that. Opposite limbs are connecting. And believe me, I'm making this up as I go. I want you to do the same. So if I have come up with a pattern that you're thinking that's crazy or I'm not getting that, make up your own pattern. The whole idea is that we're connecting opposite limbs. This is a mind-body exercise. And where we started, we'll start, we'll meet there. So we've got right leg up, left arm up. Then let's just see if we can extend. So we bring it down. 
We start with a lift and then we extend it out. And I can't do a lot of talking here because I'm like you, I gotta think about this. I gotta stay with my awareness so I can do it. <laughs> Last time, one more cycle on each side, you know, just do them through. And back to neutral and just find your reset of the body. Maybe your low back needs a little attention moving through your cow and your cat, whatever you might need. Let's do that single leg where we're just gonna grab hold of the shin so we can hug knee into the chest. And while we've got that foot up, we're gonna circle around and wake up the joint of the ankle and the foot. Many, many joints in the foot. Kind of spread your toes a little bit too. Keep your standing leg placed properly that it is engaged. So this leg here has stayed put to create a nice foundation for you. So we've pulled in on one side. I want you to push through on the other. A pull and a push is happening here pulling in the bent knee toward the chest and belly and pushing through that extended leg that, that used to be your standing leg. So pull and push and find your breath. See if you can get as much strength out of your legs as possible so it doesn't feel like your hands and arms are keeping this entirely in place that you're just pulling. See if you can make your legs get stronger and your arms get to release a little bit. That's it. Find your full breath. We're gonna switch now, bringing both feet to the floor. If body needs a reset, here's your time to do that. We'll meet with the other knee hugging into the chest. Use your shin to do that hugging. And we're gonna circle the foot around, waking up the joints of this foot and the ankle. Keep your spine long, find consistency of the breath. And then let's try the pull and the push. So extending one leg long in front of you, push through the sole of your foot. Use your heel to do that pushing as much as you can and pull in on the other side. So one side pulling in, that bent knee is pulling in and the extended leg is pushing out, pushing away. Full breath in, right through the belly, all the way through the body with your breath. Try to make your legs really use leg strength, not so much arms, just being aware that you could lean entirely into your arms here when that's not the intent, this is asteya. You remember that from the yamas, stealing, non-stealing. Not, um, Asteya says non-stealing. So don't steal from your arms when this is work of your legs. Let's get everything back to neutral. Feet come back to the floor. I want you to move through your cow and your cat again. When you're in your rounded back, we're gonna reach forward, 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 laying those armpits right on top of the knees, look down and underneath yourself, surrender the weight of your head. Open up your feet a little wider, just a little bit. Keep your knees and ankles in alignment so you stacked your joints. Jump your hands to your thighs, squeeze your elbows in, find that halfway lift where your back body is in that diagonal position. Now, I want you to imagine that you're about ready to lift your bottom up off the chair so you feel your legs powerhouse here and extend those arms away from your body like our airplane wings. Stay with the strength of your legs. Like you're just about ready to lift a standing, but you never do. Instead, you're just feeling it and using it as a strength for your legs, thighs particularly. 
Deeply breathe here through the whole the space of your body. Your legs are gonna need your breath. Flip those palms up and let's come up to all the way up and overhead with the palms. Exhale, bow into yourself with the heart. Inhale up and exhale, go wide. Let's shimmy ourselves around so we can now create that mermaid leg with our legs just joined together. We create a right angle as best as we can. Sit up tall, nice and erect in the spine. Let's start with some individual shoulder rolls. So you might just start with your right shoulder, just starting to move it back. And let's add one more dimension. We really work that backside. So you've got your right shoulder loosened up. Why don't we go forward with that other shoulder? So for forward movement of shoulders. Let's see how that works. And we begin our twist. We're gonna turn to face that back of the chair, grabbing hold of it in some way. And then just noticing your shoulder blades, squeeze those legs together, including your ankles. Begin to move into your version of this, what your body is opening to. Try to stay as tall and erect of, with the spine as you can, and that you're revolving from that space. Try to look over your right shoulder with, so you're aware of your neck and how much range of movement you're experiencing. Now breathe all the way through all of that. Let your exhale completely come out each and every time. Let's use this as an opportunity to remember our single word mantra of focus. I hope you've been using it. I just, that was the first time it occurred to me, but please try to infiltrate that focal word in your practice today. Let's unwind the head and then the shoulders can join that back to a neutral position. We'll start shimmying ourselves around. So we're facing in the other direction, squeeze your legs together, pull the belly in upright. So let's start with individual shoulder movements. So this one, that left shoulder is going up back and down, back and down. And the other shoulder, whenever you're ready to address that, is moving forward. So stay with those individual shoulder rolls until you feel like they're, they've done their work. It's, it's helping you out. And then you're ready. And then you're ready to start your twist, turning toward the back of the chair, upright and noticing those shoulder blades, cooperating now. So it's like you're twisting right at the navel area primarily. Remember, it always starts low and it works its way up. Your head and neck just comes along for the ride. Squeeze those legs together for a nice strong foundation and pay attention to what your body is notifying you. That's the relationship there. That's the communication that's going on is the sensation that you're experiencing. Check out the range of movement in your neck on this side. See what you can do to relax into that. That maybe your shoulder was all pinched up and that was why the neck found a limited range. Deepen the breath. Find your focal point, your single word. We're gonna unwind the head and then the shoulders. And we're gonna scoot around to center and this time we're gonna have a wide angle. So your heels are lined up underneath your knees at a wide angle, kind of heels in and toes out. Hands are on the thighs and we're circling around. I want you to get some real core strength involved. So pull in on that deep abdominal wall. Just gonna soften and relax that low back so it doesn't feel any you know, 
tension, undo tension in there. I want you to change the direction whenever it feels right for you, change the direction of the circle. Good, let's come back to center. Dropping one shoulder at a time into the center of the, between the space of your knees, you're just gonna fold down and kind of twist. So you're dropping one shoulder at a time into that space managing the weight of your head. You're just paying attention to the fact that, you know, it could be uh, uncomfortable for your neck if you don't pay attention to this. Even it out so it feels like each shoulder had the same number of trips into the center there and come back to your neutral position. Let's come back now with arms extended in a T-shape, turn those palms up. Let's create again those uh, that cactus-like position. Palms face forward, let's close it and open it. Elbows are lifted to the height of the armpits. Find the rhythm of movement here, connected to your breath. Now, next time you're opened up, I want you to press your feet into the floor and act as though you're gonna lift your bottom up off that chair. So again, your legs have really turned on, very powerfully turned on, and we're up into this goddess position. Real strong legs, feel the feet pressing down into the ground, and you feel as though you're just about ready to lift your bottom up off of the chair. Deepen the breath. Excellent, let's release back. See, we never moved off the chair, but you can feel that. Okay, relax back into the chair. Palms come together up. Exhale, heart bow into yourself. Inhale up, turn palms to face forward. Let's fold all the way down. Your choice, either all the way down and look down and underneath yourself, or that you choose to come to that halfway lift where your back body is in that diagonal position, much more uh, challenging. So you choose all the way, all the way down or a halfway. Extended arms is one very challenging way or hands could be at the thighs if you choose that halfway lift. Let's give it one more full breath cycle in any way you are. And then we're coming back up. Let's meet in the cactus arms once again, dropping the palms and lifting. Just catch up with your breath. and release. Do any kind of reset your body might need, turning your head side to side, whatever your body might be needing. Let's do a couple uh, external, we're in our position of external rotation in the hip. So I'm gonna suggest you grab hold of the chair some way, I got it behind me now, so that you can lift a leg at a time up. So now we're just kind of exploring a little more movement through that externally rotated hip lifting those knees up, go the feet side to side. Try two lifts on each side. We'll do that one more time. And back to center, back to our open straddle here. Shoulders are dipping into the center. Last time here, even it out, both shoulders made its way to the center and now let's bring our feet back together. We're gonna to scoot those feet under so we're able to lift ourselves up and out of that chair. So any way that you find useful to kind of really emphasize the balance, the mindfulness of getting yourself boosted out of that chair, at least three times. One time let's grab the block and then we'll come up with it and that's where we'll meet. I'm gonna scoot myself back just a bit. So you've got yourself in a mountain pose. 
in front of your chair. Let's give it some space. You don't need to be so close that you're touching. And as a matter of fact, we're gonna get our feet opened a little wider than the chair. So wider than hips distance apart. And let's begin. Well, let's catch up with our breath. Feel our adjustment to standing up. Maybe bend and straighten the knees, move your hips around a little bit. So let's take a little transition here. Catch up with your breathing. Maybe close your eyes and find that focal point, that word. Just connecting now as we transition to standing poses. We're gonna find the steadiness of these poses. Steadiness of the body, asana. When you're ready and only when you're ready, we're gonna start moving. I'm gonna suggest you got your hips in, in movement and now we're getting that block to switch around from hand to hand. So that of course is nice movement for the shoulders. Keeping the same pattern of movement for a while. Again, just finding the rhythm and a little softness of the knee here. If you wanna have your head and neck involved, like you're looking around with it because you know that feels kind of good, choose your drishti. Last time with this particular pattern, then we're just gonna switch so that the other hand is handing off instead of receiving. You're going from receiving to giving, from giving to receiving, I should say. So just noticing that, kind of interesting. Last time around, we're gonna meet with a block out front. I'm gonna to turn to the side just a bit. You don't need to do anything different. And we're holding it, palms are just holding onto that block and lifting up. Let's drop that block behind the head and then back up. So just coming, just try to squeeze your elbows in towards your head a little bit. And lift and hold. Arms are alongside the ears and you're lifting your block up toward the ceiling. Full breath in and out. Let the shoulder blades slide down the back. Don't crowd them in towards your neck and ears. Let the shoulder blades drop down through the back. Excellent. And all the way down, I'm just gonna put the block on the chair. We're into our mountain pose. Ha, I'm gonna change my mind about that. Let's use the block between our thighs so it can help govern our posture in our mountain pose. So maybe open your heels just a tad, a little wider than normal and squeeze that block. Pull the belly in, shoulders are back and down, palms face forward, close your eyes now and just feel the strength of this pose with that added dimension of the block to align you and to bring reference into your inner thighs. Now deepen the breath. So you can really feel what's happening, what parts of your body are engaged here, how that addition of the block has changed your experience, your focal point. I want you to feel into the soles of your feet and play around with what's the sweet spot for you. Where do you wanna put some more emphasis? in the soles of your feet. This is not nothing, folks. I don't want you to act like that's just a side thing. It's a big deal. Pay attention to the how your body weight is carried in your feet. Palms face forward, shoulders back and down. Find your full breath cycle. Stay with it. There's a lot going on here. Softening the knees, feeling the soles of the feet the interaction of the thighs, strong core. Squeezing the thighs is good, generates a whole different part of core strength. Shoulders back and down, eyes closed. Our focal point, our word shows up. Exhale completely, two more times.
Good, let's flutter the eyes open. Inhale up, palms come together overhead. Exhale, bow into your heart. Inhale up, bend the knees like crazy. See if you can touch the floor. Keeping the block there if possible, touch the floor, hang low, bringing your head as close to your legs as you can. I'm gonna give you a side view. No, I'm not because you don't need to look up. You don't need to look up at all. So you're just folding forward, looking down and underneath yourself. The block is there for reference, a different way to experience this full forward fold. Exhale completely. One more breath. And exhale completely, bringing your hands to your thighs, squeeze your elbows together. Can you lift halfway? Can you bring your shoulders up to the level of your hips so you're in an L shape? Squeeze your block. It's going to give you more power than you realize. Hold it right here with the kind of the bracket of support with that your arms and hands provide. Or if you wanna bring your hands away from the body and use pure core strength, no bracket involved and find your airplane wings instead. All the way up now, whichever way you chose, we're lifting up and bringing palms together up and overhead. Let's pause here as we catch up with the breath and feel the body, feel this steadiness of the body. Feel your shoulder blades find their place of right alignment. Beautiful, now we'll inhale together. Exhale, heart, bow into yourself. Inhale up, exhale, go wide. Now we can lose the block and I'm gonna say on the floor, somewhere away from you now. Let's turn so that we can use the back of the chair for support. And we're gonna create that L shape. So I want you to bend and straighten, bend and straighten. So you're doing some squats, bending your knees and then straighten, lining up your feet. Your feet should be straight and parallel to each other. Bend and straighten a couple more. And then we'll meet with a straightened leg trying to pull, this is one opportunity where you actually can safely lock the knees, if you will. In other words, really straighten your legs. You're pulling back through the femur bones. You're grounding in through the whole surface of your feet. It'll feel like the heel is doing the majority of that connection to the ground. Just share it a little bit throughout the surface of your feet. Really work on straightening the legs, stretching through the calf muscles and the hamstrings in this L shape fold. Deep in the breath, maybe tap your chin in towards your throat a little bit so your head feels very neutral, arms extended past the ears. Don't grip the chair. Your legs have the power to do this. Your arms are just, you know, extended and using that as a touchstone for balance, but your legs can hold you up. Let's start walking toward the chair. And when we do so, we're gonna find immediately our mountain pose. I want you to grow the root of your tailbone now to, very, to stabilize your low back and catch up with your breathing. We're gonna come into that very same pose, only we're gonna add what's called the warrior three. So it's gonna morph into warrior three, which means one leg's going up in the air. So you know what we're gonna, we're, you're going to find next. Palms come back to the chair. You start stepping back. We're starting with that L shape. You could say, I'm going to pass on that. I can do, I'm going to keep two legs, two feet to the ground, no matter what. That's my option. Please do that if that feels better for you. I'm going to make an adjustment so I feel like I've got plenty of room to extend. That L shape shifting, I'm shifting weight into one side, letting the other leg Lift up, I'm trying to lift up to the height of my hip. You could do it differently. You could lift your leg up any amount and find that one-legged balance of warrior three. To just really sharpen the pose, if you'd like, turn your hands so the palms face each other. So you're resting on your forearms or the sides of your hands, palms face each other. Head is right there between your extended arms. Let's find a full breath in and out. That foot, the, the extended leg, the toes are pointing to the ground. 
Let's get both feet to the floor. We're gonna come back up, take a breather, let our body's blood pressure adjust. Bring yourself right into your mountain. Now, if you've had it, we're gonna do this one more time and get the other leg up in the air, but you know, you're, you're done with the forward folds. I want you to find another stretch you enjoy and just wait to catch up and join in when it's appropriate for you. Walking back for those who are participating in the warrior three, we're creating that L shape, shifting weight into the other leg now. So one leg is holding you up and one leg of course is extending back and you're trying to lift your leg any amount or no higher than hip height. Toes are pointing down on that foot that's up in the air and palms are facing each other if you wanna add that particular adjustment. Deepen the breath. Both feet are coming back to the floor. We're slowly walking ourselves back up, back into a mountain pose. Catch up with your breathing. If your block is still fairly handy, I would suggest you bring it back to your thighs so you have again that reference. Close your eyes so you're working from the inside out. You're feeling your breath. You're feeling the engagement of the block, surface of the feet, relaxing the neck, shoulders down the back, full breath in and out. Ease and steadiness of the body. Excellent. Let's remove the block and turn your chair so that the seat of the chair is facing you. This gives us that low level of support for downward facing dog. Palms are coming onto that seat of the chair. Walk back. Again, I would suggest you bend and straighten. Bend and straighten. So kind of do some squats here. And then when you're ready, you'll just come into the holding pattern of straight legs, arms extended past the ears tucking the chin and feeling that long, strong support for your back and your legs. Press into the ball ones of the feet and the toes as much as your heels. And know that this is designed to lengthen the spine so that maybe your particular awareness, your particular Intention is just that, lengthening through the spine. One more full breath cycle. Be sure to empty out that exhale entirely. Start to walk yourself back to the chair, but let's meet there. Palms are on the chair seat. We're in what's called the tabletop. Our arms have become table legs and the back body is the tabletop. Let's bend the knee and open it out to the side. And maybe you turn to look at it. Fire up your foot so you're engaging the muscles of the leg by just sort of flexing the foot. Let's try the other side too. Take your time to switch legs. Flex that foot, knee bends to the side. I want you to turn your head to look over at what you're doing. You're looking over to the side. Find your breath now, don't hold your breath. And both feet to the floor. I want you to bend your knees, let your chin drop towards your chest. Head is heavy and you're rolling up one vertebrae at a time, very slowly. Your head is the very last to come up. Your body's all the way lifted and finally your head is able to come up. Don't move anything else now. Stay right where you are and let your body adjust. Catch up with your breathing. Stay here. 
Soften the knees. Feel your body now coming into balance. Feel the aliveness, the vibrancy of the body. When you're ready, we're coming into Shavasana. So coming, I've got to you know, move my chair and come back to the place we started and leaning back into the chair for total support. We want the chair to provide the steadiness for the body. Let your legs just relax into the position so you're not trying to hold them in any particular way. You're allowing your body to find its own rest. Doesn't need much guidance. Probably the best participation that we can offer is the allowing, is releasing and allowing the body to soften and be held by this chair. Close your eyes. And notice your breath as it starts to simmer down. And it might take a while. We had a very active practice there. Your breath is going to catch up in its own good time. Let's relax the shoulders and the arms. And I'm gonna invite you to participate in the circle of breath where the inhale starts at the soles of the feet and makes its way through the front body, traveling that inhale all the way through the front body through the very crown of your head and roll right over into the exhalation that rolls through the back side of the body down to the soles of the feet. Feel that full body of experience of breath as a circle that surrounds you. And see if you could imagine that there is light associated with that breath. The fullness of breath, inhale and exhale, has a sort of glow to it, light that moves through that circle of the body. So you are closed by that loving light, healing light, tender light, calm ease light. Feel your body totally supported by the light. Relax your shoulders. I want you to feel, imagine that I've come around and placed my hands on your shoulders now, right inside your circle of light. You have that sense of connection. Support. Love. Imagine being able to find that still point so that pure love is our experience, pure acceptance, pure kindness, and anything else would be inconceivable. Just imagine.
stay with your eyes closed. And let me read from my meditation book that I use daily in my own uh, daily practice. And today, June 27th, has such an appropriate reading that I wanted to offer it today. We crave security. Even the most restless and adventurous among us has a need for bedrock certainty about something. Religion fills this need for some. Politics or ideas satisfy others. When this need is answered, we can achieve a measure of serenity. Where does this need come from? Nothing in nature is fixed or constant. We know that our bodies, our surroundings, the air we breathe are made up of chemical compounds that are always changing, renewing, building up and breaking down. Change is the only constant. And yet, if our inner reality mirrors this change, we may feel chaotic and unquiet. All great philosophies and religions share the image of a still point, a final proof. The purpose of meditation is to quiet the mind, to find this still point. It is a human need to imagine something beyond changing reality that is the real certainty, the real assurance. In a world of shifting, slipping reality, where it sometimes seems that our identity is just part of a database that one computer error could erase, where city streets and national boundaries change their shape every year, we need all the inner stillness and serenity we can find. Belief in constant values can anchor us. Truth is truth, love is love, and we are what we are. These things are always true for us. I will cultivate my inner serenity. I will attempt to find my constant truth. Let's take a full breath in through the nose and exhale that out through the mouth with a sound of ah. 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 Keeping your eyes closed. Rub your palms together in front of your heart. Now generate some heat. Remember, your hands are an extension of the energy of the heart center. And then let's lay those warm, loving hands across our face and eyes and open your eyes into that space. Lift up now, palms are together, up and overhead. Look up there. Exhale, bow into yourself at your heart. Inhale, back up. And exhale, let's share. Palms again at the Anjali Mudra at the heart center. Take a moment now to find your focus word. We bow into ourselves and to one another. Namaste, my friends. Thank you for joining me. And if you're new to this channel, please subscribe to my channel. Where do we subscribe?